It hadn't even been a full day since the Shiranui advanced guide dropped and Konami nerfed it with a ban list. I thought, alright, fine. The deck still works exactly the same. Then on the day the ban list came into effect, they nerfed the deck again. No! It's alright guys, Shiranui isn't dead. Well, not any more dead than a zombie normally is, but there are a lot of things that are different about it now. I should say though, this video isn't going to be teaching you how to play the deck in general, but if you are looking to learn how the deck plays, then you are still going to get a lot of benefit from watching the Shiranui Advanced Guide. So if you don't know how to play the deck yet, then definitely go and watch that video before watching this one, because in this video I'm going to be talking as if you already know what the deck did before the nerfs. Shiranui's hasn't actually changed that drastically in what the deck actually does. You're still going to be setting up a skill saga and a sun saga to destroy the opponent's cards. But there are still new combos and there is a new focus since previously we had to hyper focus on beating Tachyon but now we have a bunch of other decks that we have to focus on beating. Since Tachyon isn't so much of a threat anymore we aren't going to be using Beatrice to send Mischief of the Gnomes anymore since that isn't going to be versatile enough against all of the decks we're going to compete with. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be using Beatrice. In fact in the new version of the deck we are actually actually trying to summon Beatrice even more than ever, as much as possible, while still being able to go into Skill Saga and summon Sun Saga, even if it means less destruction, because Beatrice can send Mizuki to the grave to extend our combos further, and it can also send Shiranui style success to make our board even harder to get through. Shiranui style success has an on-field effect to special summon a zombie from your hand, but banish it when it leaves the field. This is a really damn slow effect, however, it has a grave effect as well to banish itself from grave and target a zombie you to control, make it unaffected by all other card effects for that turn. We are planning to send this to the grave on the opponent's turn with Beatrice so we can make either Skill Saga or Sun Saga unaffected by card effects so that the opponent can't prevent our interruption on, the t on their turn. In order to set the Beatrice combo up, we are going harder in our main deck for the Beatrice combo by playing the Solitaire and Mizuki at maximum copies, the Solitaire being at 2 so that we can play the Beatrice, but also playing Gazuki to give us the highest chance of getting it done. Since we aren't playing the Beatrice for the purpose of gnomes anymore, we can actually take greater advantage of Beatrice sending Mizuki on our own turn to give us better combos. Before we get into those combos though, I do need to bring up the important fact that we can no longer search for back row with this skill. So we can no longer rely on Shiranui style Samsara, so it isn't really worth playing anymore since we would just brick on it. It also means that we can't really rely on Ghost Meets Goal. Unfortunately, not being able to search for it going second is going to make us quite a bit weaker to interruption when we're going second. However, the deck can still break boards and play through interruptions without the ghost meets girl, it will just be weaker, and Gazuki can make things a bit better going second himself as well. The deck still has all the combos that it had before, however the addition of Gazuki to the deck adds a lot more options. Unlike Squire, Gazuki can't be searched for, so much of the time you're still going to be going for all the Squire combos that we went over in the advanced guide. However, Gazuki, if you happen to open it, not only gives you better combos, but also gives you a lot more options. Gazuki is a level 4 earth zombie that has the ignition effect to send any zombie from your deck to the grave. It also has the grave effect that if he is sent to the grave in any way, that you can banish another zombie from grave in order to special summon any zombie from your hand. Being able to send anything can give you some really great utility. You could send your newly limited copy of Spirit Master, but your Spectral Sword can banish it to trigger the Spirit Master's destruction effect. You'd also send Solitaire so that when Spectral Sword banishes it, it'll bring back the tuner. So you can then use the tuner alongside the Gazuki for another synchro summon. You could send Mizuki to easily revive something. If you already have Mizuki, you could send Shade to the grave for it to revive, to extend your combos further. Let's show some combo examples. If all you have available to you is Gazuki and any other Shiranui in hand, then you can normal summon Gazuki and use its effect to send Solitaire to the grave. Have Spectral Sword banish itself and Solitaire to summon Doomkaiser, and trigger Solitaire to bring back the Spectral Sword. From there you could use Spectral Sword and Doomkaiser together to go into Shogun Saga then link the Shogun Saga and Gazuki off into Vampire Sucker. Then Gazuki can banish another zombie from your grave, preferably the one that isn't Spectral Sword, to summon a zombie from your hand. Now you can use the skill to return your two synchros to the extra deck and banish Sun Saga and Sword Saga. With the Vampire Sucker and the zombie on your field, you can link summon Shirinui Skill Saga Supremacy. This is just the very bare minimum play you can make with Gazuki. Just showing that you can accomplish the same basic board that Squire can accomplish, not even needing to use the discard part of the skill. If you have 
have Gazuki alongside Mizuki or Solitaire though, then things get quite a bit spicier. First, let's talk about if you open Gazuki alongside Mizuki. First, you can use a skill to discard Mizuki and search for Solitaire. Then you can normal summon Gazuki and use its effect to send another Solitaire for, to the grave. From there, you can use Spectral Sword to banish itself and Solitaire to summon Doom Kaiser, and then the Solitaire will trigger to bring back the Spectral Sword. Now you can use Spectral Sword and Gazuki to synchro summon Samurai Saga. And you can trigger Gazuki in the grave to banish the Spectral Sword from your grave in order to special summon the Solitaire from your hand. Now with the two level sixes, you XC summon Beatrice and detach one of her materials to send another copy of Mizuki from deck to grave. The Solitaire can then tribute itself to summon Spectral Sword Shade from the deck. Remember that Shade will lock you into zombies after using its effect, so make sure you've already gone into Beatrice before trying to use Shade's effect. Use the Shade's effect to bring back Spectral Sword and Solitaire from the banished pile. You can use both of them to link summon Vampire Sucker. Use the first Mizuki to revive Solitaire, which will trigger the Sucker to draw you a card, and the second Mizuki to revive Shade and use those on field to synchro summon Squire Saga. Then link the Squire Saga and Vampire Sucker into Skill Saga Supremacy. And with the two synchros engraved, you'll now be able to use a skill to return them to the extra deck and banish Sun Saga and Sword Saga for your interruption. With Beatrice still having one material left, on your opponent's draw phase, you can activate her again to send Shira Nui style success, which you can use as a quick effect to make your Skill Saga or Sun Saga unaffected by card effects whenever you like, but they'll still be affected by their own card effects, which is really awesome. If you instead open up with Gazuki in Solitaire, then you can use the skill to discard that Solitaire and search for Spectral Sword Shade. Then you can use Spectral Sword Engrave, banishing itself in Solitaire to summon Doom Kaiser, and the Solitaire will trigger to bring back the Spectral Sword. Now you can normal summon Gazuki and use its effect to send Mezuki from deck to grave, and then you can use Gazuki and Spectral Sword to synchro summon Samurai Saga. Gazuki will trigger Engrave, banishing Spectral Sword to summon Shade from your hand. Now you can overlay your two level sixes into Beatrice and detach a material to send another copy of Mizuki from deck to grave. You can now activate your Shade to bring back Solitaire and Spectral Sword from the Banish Pile, and you can use them both to link summon Vampire Sucker. Then you can use the first Mizuki to revive Solitaire, which will trigger Vampire Sucker to draw a card. Then you can use the second Mizuki to revive Shade. Now you can use Solitaire and Shade to synchro summon Squire Saga, and you can link Vampire Sucker and Squire Saga into Skill Saga Supremacy. With two Synchros in the grave, you'll be able to return them to the extra deck and banish Sun Saga and Sword Saga for your interruption. And on the opponent's draw phase, your Beatrice will be able to detach another material to send Shiren Nui style success. As you can see, Gazuki with Solitaire is almost entirely the same combo as Gazuki with Mizuki, and they're both going to end with your basic interruption that also happens to be unaffected by card effects when you want it to be. If the opponent is able to interrupt parts of your combo, the floating effect of Gazuki and the revival of the Mezuki can also be really helpful to help you try to summon something to help at least keep you in the duel as well. But that is going to depend on how the opponent interrupts you and what you have available to you. There aren't any set combos for that, you just have to do what you can with what you've got. If you happen to be going second with this combo, then you also get the added benefit that you can use the Squire Saga to banish Samurai Saga to destroy a back row and a monster before using it and Sucker to go into Skill Saga. On top of the fact that with the Beatrice there, you will have a lethal amount of damage if the opponent's board is clear and you'll still have the interruption and the Shirinui style success on the opponent's turn if the opponent survived. Aside from the Gazuki combos, this deck is going to function pretty much exactly the same. You're going to be using the combos from the advanced guide just as much now as you were before. It's just that the Gazuki is an alternate option for you if you feel you need a combo that gives you more options for when you're interrupted or if you feel that you need to set up more protection for your turn one interruption. The other combos are often going to give you a bit more power when it comes to breaking the opponent's board, so if you don't know those combos, definitely watch the advanced guide again. However, there is going to be a pretty big change because of the skill nerf for when you're going second. It used to be that you could use a skill to search for Ghost Meets Girl, and with that, you could do a whole combo with Solitaire that didn't even use your normal summon. But if the opponent interrupted you, you could still use your normal summon and still end up OTKing the opponent or setting up a solid board. Now that we can't search for Ghost Meets Girl with the skill, and it isn't convenient in our combos to search for it with Smith, our options are either to hope that we can draw into Ghost Meets Girl when we are going second, or just to stop relying on it entirely. I think that we can have a bit of a middle ground here though. We can't rely on searching for Ghost Meets Girl with a skill, but it isn't the only card in the deck that can't be searched for. Like we can't search for Gozuki in any way, 
and we can't search for any staples that we might be playing either. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we shouldn't play them, just because we can't rely on searching for them. If we have Gazuki, great, we can use him in our combos, but if we don't have him then it's okay because we will still have other combos to do. If we don't have our staples, it's okay because we will still have our inherent game plan. I think we can still play Ghost Meets Girl and be happy if we draw it, but if we don't draw it then that's okay too. In the advanced guide, the best combo involving Ghost Meets Girl assumes that we can use it alongside Shiranui Squire. And it has Ghost Meets Girl summoning Solitaire to do the Solitaire combo and summoning Squire at the end of it. The same combo can also be ended with a Gazuki normal summon instead of a Squire normal summon if we happen to have a shade in the grave somehow. But having Gazuki send Mizuki to revive that shade the same as if Squire had summoned shade from the deck. Since Ghost Meets Girl now not only combos well with Squire but also with Gazuki, we can play more copies of Ghost Meets Girl in order to more consistently draw into it when we need to. The big downside of Ghost Meets Girl though is that it won't work if the opponent doesn't have a monster on their side of the field. But it's okay because you could set it to use on the opponent's turn since it is a quick play spell and you could summon Samurai from the deck with it. That way you could potentially banish Solitaire from the grave as an alternate way to summon Sun Saga on the opponent's turn if you can't use Skill Saga for whatever reason. Samurai could also potentially banish Spirit Master from grave if you have it there as a way to destroy an opponent's face up during their plays. At the very worst, Samurai banishing something will make it difficult to, for the opponent to battle it because if it uses its effect it will banish whatever it battles even if it lost the battle. For these reasons I think that it might be worth bumping the Ghost Meets Girl up to two or three copies in your deck. I think that moving forward this is going to be the way my own Shirinui deck looks of course as time goes on more adaptations may be made but the deck still plays the same with the addition of Gazuki combos as well. The Gazuki on follow-up is also pretty insane since you can pretty easily do a Gazuki combo on a follow-up turn even after doing your turn one combos. Previously if you are going to be making Beatrice your priority then you'd be relying on the one card combos of Solitaire and Mizuki. The Solitaire one card combo did need you to main deck a copy of the original Spectral Sword though and all that it would end on is Beatrice itself and the Mizuki combo only really ending on the Beatrice without anything else. That was totally fine during Tachyon format since just by sending Mischief of the Gnomes from deck to grave you can pretty much win the duel from that but there are more decks you have to worry about than Tachyons these days so those one card combos aren't really worth going for at the moment. You definitely should side deck one copy of Spectral Sword and one copy of Mischief of the Gnomes in case you do go against somebody that you absolutely must go into Beatrice for like if your opponent is Tachyon or any other deck that relies on the levels of their monsters in their hand. So that way you'll be able to do Beatrice if you have Gazuki, Solitaire or Mizuki. Any one of those by themselves can give you a Beatrice to make that play if you need. But for general gameplay you'll only be going into Beatrice if you are using Gazuki alongside Mizuki or Solitaire since it will give you more than just a Beatrice. It'll also give you an unaffected skill saga interruption. Squire is still the most reliable starter in the deck as always but since technically Gazuki can still get stuff going for us we can get away with only playing one Squire since we are just going to search for it when we need it anyway. Other than these things the deck is going to be looking pretty much the same in terms of the core cards but the staples you choose are going to be based on what you have available to you and what you think is best for the format. I've got Didi Crow in here since it's good against Mayakashi, Shirinui, Live Twins, Blue Eyes, Tenyi, Galaxy Eyes and Shadows. You could definitely play Book, Droplet, Needle Ceiling since they all work well in the deck but they are going to vary a bit in terms of how much they may help you against the different decks that you'll be facing against. Of course I'm not here to tell you how to build the deck I'm only here to show you how to play it so let us know what deck building ideas you have for the deck and what you think is going to be the best way to build the deck moving forward. I know a lot of people are sick and tired of fighting against Shirinui but it is still one of my favorite decks of all time and I understand that the skill was busted as hell before but hopefully now that Shirinui can't survive infinitely with the trap you guys can start to see how fun this deck is. I'm really happy with where the deck is right now but I want to know how do you guys feel? Do you love this deck or do you still hate this deck? And be sure to let us know how you're feeling about this new update series we are doing and I also want to know whether you prefer Mayakashi or Shiranui. I'm having a bit of trouble figuring out which one I like more so I want to see what you guys think. But yeah guys if you have any other questions about the deck or in general be sure to leave them in the comments and we can talk about it and if you like the video then slap like now, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell to get notified every time we make a new video. Have yourselves a good one guys and I've been Undead from Team 6k signing out. Hey, why they gotta hate on me? I done got me a quarter million views and they still saying they low key. They ain't wanna come work with the kid, but I'm flexing with Zay on beats. How they ask for a spot at the gym, but they leave all the weight on me. I don't ask them to wait on me. 
They would ask where they gon' be With a song if they wanted the weather, man I ain't asking to pay no fees She was homeless and needed a spot I ain't asking to pay no lease I ain't asking to say no please I ain't asking to make no cheese Scream fake, but it ain't on me Got clean so it ain't no streets Why green if it ain't no keeps Brought cream so it ain't no beef My team say it ain't no chief My demon, they hang on me They seemingly ain't no peace I seen him, he ain't no beast For 